Casemaker is the leading provider of low-cost legal research in the United States. And here we are on the Casemaker homepage. Off to the left are some links that are specific to your personal Casemaker account that you can go over and explore at any time. The top portion of your screen provides you with the search area. This section contains everything you need to conduct your searches and will remain at the top of your screen regardless of where you are in the Casemaker database. This will help keep you from getting lost in the system and provides you with easy access for new searches. In the main portion of the page, we have our browsing area. This is where you can navigate through the content Casemaker provides. The All Content tab in the blue navigation bar provides you with a listing of libraries Casemaker contains. The Federal Materials tab provides you with a listing of our federal libraries. And the State Materials tab provides you with a listing of all 50 states plus the District of Columbia. Regardless of your bar affiliation, Casemaker provides you with access to all 50 states, the District of Columbia, as well as all of our federal materials. We'll go ahead and click on Kentucky. Each state will offer you different levels of information, at a minimum giving you access to administrative code, cases, statutes, and the Constitution. Many bar associations have partnered with us to provide access to Casemaker to their members, and in turn have asked that we provide additional content in their state. Kentucky is a pretty good example of this. Here we can see additional libraries are offered. Let's go ahead and click on Statutes. Each item in the Casemaker library will open in an index or table of contents fashion using an intuitive click-as-you-go system. This makes navigating through the content pretty simple. So here we can see a listing of titles. And by clicking on Title V Military Affairs, for example, we're provided with a listing of chapters that title contains. We can then click on a particular chapter to see the listing of statutes that chapter holds in numerical order. We can then click on an individual statute to view the text that it holds. Also provided on this statute page is a red line of text letting you know how up-to-date this particular statute is. If there was any new affecting legislation for this statute, you would be notified of that here and instructed to click on the Supercode tab in the Dark Gray Toolbar to review that information. Also provided in the Dark Gray Toolbar is the Archive tab. This will provide you with the opportunity to view the statute as it stood in previous years. The Annotator tab is a new feature in the Casemaker system. This will provide you with a listing of cases that have mentioned this statute, including links to take you directly to that case and where the statute was mentioned. The Browse TOC tab will take you back to the Table of Contents, where your statute was located. In addition to clicking on an individual statute, you can also choose to click on the italicized combined listing at the top of the statutes. This will actually display the text from all of these statutes in the chapter on one screen, so you can scroll through and read through those statutes and that chapter in its entirety. When you're ready to return to the home page, there are two ways to do so. You can locate and click on the home link here at the top of the search area, or you can click on the Casemaker logo. Also provided in the blue navigation bar is a link for our tools. This will provide you with a brief description of the tools that we offer. These tools are additional subscription features, meaning they are not generally included with your bar membership or your basic Casemaker plan, so you would need to purchase them in order to take advantage of them. There are, of course, a few exceptions to this in that some bar associations have decided to take on this cost for their members. You can find out if you're a member of one of these bar associations by contacting the bar association directly or by contacting Casemaker's customer support team. Also provided in the blue navigation bar is the Archive tab. This will allow you to view legislative acts or statutes and then select a state such as Alabama. From here, you can select a year and view the statutes as they stood at that time. We recognize that access to previous laws is helpful, especially when working on a case dealing with an offense that occurred a couple of years ago, for example. It would be necessary to view the laws as they stood at the time the offense occurred, so it's important to us at Casemaker to be able to provide that information to you. Let's go ahead and go back to the home page and take a look at performing searches. 
I know this is the part of the system I utilize the most. I mentioned earlier that the top portion of your screen is the search area and that it contains everything you need to conduct your searches. This is our Google-like search bar. We say that it is Google-like because you can type in what you're looking for and CaseMaker will deliver results to you from all of our libraries. Much like entering a search in Google, how you would then receive websites in addition to images, videos, shopping options, and more. CaseMaker will provide you with results including case law, statutes, attorney general opinions, and more depending on your jurisdiction. Now before conducting your search, of course, you do need to establish the jurisdiction you're searching in. Directly to the right of the bar that you type in is our jurisdiction menu. Clicking on this box will open the jurisdiction menu and allow you to select as many or as few states as you see fit for this research. You can also select your federal materials here. Your state and federal level searching can be conducted simultaneously. You may have also noticed the select related federal box. Checking this box will cause CaseMaker to return results from your selected state or states as well as any federal material relevant to that jurisdiction specifically. We'll go with all states for the presentation. You can then click the blue save button at the bottom to get started searching. You can type in pretty much anything you need into the search bar. Start with keywords, a citation, case name, anything. If you prefer to conduct a more complex syntax search, I highly recommend clicking on the blue search tips link that appears here below the search button. This will provide you with a listing of operators that function in the CaseMaker system. While of course you can utilize those operators and can combine them in any manner you see fit, my best recommendation to you is actually to start your search off pretty simple. I'm going to start off by typing in a couple of keywords and then clicking the blue search button to perform our search. Here you can see your initial results. What you will see in the initial results are the top two most relevant results from each of the libraries in the jurisdiction you've selected. So here you can see two results for cases, two statutes, two acts, administrative code, and so on. When you're ready to see all of the items in one particular library, you can either click on the View All link next to your library's heading, or you can select your library from the left-hand overview. Now the results listing is displaying 20 results per page. So here you can see results 1 through 20, and by locating and clicking on this arrow in the dark gray toolbar, you can see results 21 through 40 and further. The left-hand menu has changed a bit. Here you can further narrow your results by adding search criteria. You can enter more keywords, choose a specific jurisdiction or a particular court, type in a citation or docket number, a full or partial case name, judge, or attorney, as well as limit your results by date. Now, personally, I find that 3,641 cases are too many to try and get through. So I'm going to narrow this down by adding some more keywords. What I've typed in is a proximity search. The W forward slash 15 tells CaseMaker to look within 15 words for the two terms you put on either side of it. So now all 160 results we're receiving provide the term handguns, the term felony, and the term assault if it falls within 15 words of the term prior. While 160 is certainly a significant decrease, I think we could certainly do better than that as well. Now typing in two words side by side is our AND function. It tells CaseMaker to find both of those terms anywhere in the document. While the proximity indicator, of course, puts a restraint on how far apart those words can be. Similarly, you can type in a phrase. If you'd like to see two or more words side by side within a case or other document, all you have to do is put quotation marks around them to tell CaseMaker to keep them grouped together. So, for instance, we can type in the phrase minor child, surround it with quotation marks, and click go. 
Now when you're conducting your research, sometimes you're going to run into a wall. Whether that's you're receiving no documents found, like we're seeing on our screen now, or the results that you're getting aren't really relevant to the type of research that you're trying to conduct. They're not specific to the case at hand. This is why I recommend starting your searches off pretty simple and building them up, sort of brick by brick and item by item. We can now review each of the items that we have typed in, handguns and felony, assault within 15 of prior, and the phrase minor child. We can assess which of these are really working for our search and which one might be able to be tweaked a bit. So, for example, I know that the phrase minor child seemed pretty important, but we could try something else. Instead of having to start our search over from the very beginning and redo all of this research, we just have to uncheck the corresponding box for the item we no longer want to include, and CaseMaker provide you with your results, less that particular item. So rather than the phrase minor child, we could just type in the word minor. And this gives us 44 cases. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results now. By default, our results are sorted according to relevance. However, you can use the sort by option in the dark gray toolbar to change this to date decided, number of times cited, or state in ascending or descending order. The dark gray toolbar also provides the opportunity to download, save to folder, email, print, and view details. View details refers to these contextually relevant snippets of information you see below each of the result listings. The results themselves will provide you with some information, including case name, citation, parallel citation where available, court, date decided, and the number of times it's been cited in the database. Next to this number is a graph icon. Clicking on it will plot on a line graph the number of times that the case has been cited over the years. You can hover over these dots to see how many times it was cited in that year specifically. And you can click on the dot to receive a listing of clickable links to those cases. Of course, the key provided helps you see if those citations were made uh, within the same state of publication, other states, or federal. You may have also noticed the green thumbs up and red thumbs down icons. This is part of Case Check Plus, one of our additional subscription features. Case Check Plus is a citator service letting you know if the case is still good law. The green thumbs up indicates the case has not received any negative treatment in subsequent cases, while the red thumbs down indicates that it has. Let's go ahead and take a closer look by clicking on the large blue title portion to access the document. The document tab is highlighted to reflect that we are viewing the document of this case. Next to this tab is citing references. This will provide you with a listing of cases that have cited this case. Links to these cases are included and will take you directly to the portion where the case you are researching has been involved. This is a standard part of the CaseMaker database. However, the negative treatment tab you see next is not and will only appear to those of you who have access to Case Check Plus. The negative treatment tab provides you with the listing of cases that have negatively affected the case you are researching. Upon returning to the document tab, you can see the light gray toolbar gives us some useful links as well. We can click here to return to the listing of our results from the search we created, or use this set of arrows to go to the previous or next result from that listing. This second set of arrows will allow you to toggle back and forth between occurrences of your search terms. Each of the terms that you've searched for is colored in red so that it's able to be identified easily. We've also incorporated a page jump feature. This makes navigating a lengthy case such as this one much easier. No more scrolling for what feels like days. Just a couple of simple clicks and you are right where you need it to be. Speaking of page numbers, CaseMaker incorporates parallel citations as well as dual pagination. The first citation provided corresponds with the page jump feature, as well as the orange page numbers you can see throughout the document. The second citation provided does not correspond with the page jump feature. However, pagination for this citation is included and can be identified by the bold black text surrounded by brackets that you can see throughout the document as well. We've incorporated a font resize option. 
With just one click, the size of the font on your screen significantly increases. And with a second click, returns to standard. The Notes menu is last in our light grade toolbar. We have the ability to add notes to any document you find in the Casemaker system. These notes are specific to your account and cannot be seen by any others. And you can add as many of these notes as you would like to as many documents as you see fit. To add a note, click on the Notes menu and choose Add Note. You can then type your note in and click Save. The notes are then stored at the top of your document. You can choose to add another note, and using the Notes menu will allow you to hide the notes or have them on display. You can use the corresponding pencil icon to make changes to your notes or the X to delete them. The dark gray toolbar still provides you with the opportunity to print, email, save to folder, and download. Let's go ahead and talk about print. Here you can select the document format that you'll be printing through. We currently offer PDF, Word, and WordPerfect. You can choose between single and dual column layout, highlight the terms you searched for, print the list of citing references, and if you have access to Case Check Plus, you could choose to print the negative treatment as well. Additionally, you can attach the notes you've typed in, as well as a separate cover page. You have these same opportunities when you email, as well as when you download. Let's talk about save to folder. Let's say your standard practice is to print cases that you need or download them to your work computer. You've gone home and after dinner you have time to do some more research and you'd like to review a case you found earlier in the day. Well, now you have to access Casemaker again anyways because the case you printed earlier is sitting on your desk at the office. Or perhaps you downloaded it to your work computer, but that's only helpful if it's a laptop and you remember to bring it home. So instead of wasting your paper or the space on your hard drive or your time, you could save the items you need to a folder in your Casemaker account which is accessible from anywhere you can access the web. The first thing you'll need to do is actually create a folder. You can do that by clicking on the Save to Folder icon and typing a folder name here to the New Folder Name field and then just click Create. Now there are actually two ways that you can go about saving items to your folders. The first is pretty straightforward. You click on the Save to Folder icon from the dark gray toolbar, choose your folder, and click Save. The second method is a little more hands-on, but absolutely useful. This time, you can click on the orange My Folder icon next to the search button, and then choose the folder you'd like to use, and click OK. This allows the orange folder icon to represent the folder that you've selected, and from this point, you can actually click, drag, and drop documents into that folder for saving. When you're ready to view the contents of your folders, you can click on the white My Folders link at the top of the search area. The listing of your folders is displayed on the left, and clicking on your folder will display its contents in the central area of the screen. Once the folder has loaded, you have the opportunity to move, rename, or delete the entire folder. You can also utilize the individual checkboxes to print, download, email, or throw away individual contents. And of course, you do have access to a trash file. Next to the My Folders link at the top of the search area is a link for your clients. Here you can create and store a list of clients that you will be doing research for. Click Add next to the Client Name field. Type in your client's name or other identifier and click OK. You can then select that client from the drop down menu and choose Continue. Or you can choose to also keep track of the different matters you're handling for that client. Click Add next to the Matter Number field. Type in a name or other identifier and click OK. You can then select that item from the drop down menu and choose Continue. 
Making your selections and choosing continue effectively logs you in as doing research for this client. You can be reminded of this by noticing the client link has changed to display the client's name. From this point forward, any research you do or documents you view are being labeled as research for this client. And I'll show you how this comes in handy in a moment. I'd also like to point out our Cosmolex practice management link here at the top of the search area. This new partnership will allow you to create a free trial or integrate your existing Cosmolex account into the Casemaker system, fostering detailed time records for your research and billing management for your firm. We'll go ahead and get into how the clients link, for example, uh, becomes handy in just a moment. For now, let's get back to searching and say you'd like to create a search and locate a statute. You can actually type that statute number right in here on the home page. Of course, you'll want to be sure you choose the proper jurisdiction for this statute. I then highly recommend you use the section radio button. This tells Casemaker how to apply the information you've typed in. And you can then click search. As you can see, the statute we were looking for comes right up. Now if we go back to the home page and conduct that search again, this time without utilizing the section radio button, we can see what happens. So this time we'll just type our statute number in, choose our jurisdiction, and click search. And what happens is Casemaker defaults to a keyword search setting. So while the statute we were looking for does appear, it's alongside any other time this particular string of numbers has been found throughout the jurisdiction's database. This, of course, can be helpful, but it can also be more of a burden. You can search in a similar manner for a case you have the citation to. From the home page, just type your citation in. As you can see, I didn't use any spacing, capitalization, or punctuation. You can if you'd like to, but Casemaker will automatically correct that formatting for you. However, you will need to be sure that you properly abbreviate your reporters. Casemaker goes by the Blue Book Citation Guidelines if you have any questions regarding abbreviations. Because the citation is already state or reporter specific, you don't have to be too choosy with the jurisdiction. Just be sure that if you're typing in a state level citation, you have the state's database selected, or if you're typing in a federal level citation, you have the federal database selected. And of course, we recommend using the citation radio button and then clicking search. As you can see, the case comes right up. Now this particular citation brings up a second case and there is a very good reason for this. This case does match our search criteria. Volume 256 of the Southwest Third Reporter and it does appear in part on page 72. So rest assured if you're typing in a pin site, you'll still be able to locate the case you're looking for. Let's take a look at the rest of the links the search area has to offer. Here we can click on a link labeled History. This will provide you with a complete history of all the searches you've created and documents you've viewed since logging into the Casemaker system. Each item in the history comes with a date and timestamp, as well as a client label if you performed it while logged into a client. So say for example you spent Friday evening searching for a particular statute and forgot to save it to a folder. No big deal. Just use your history to find it again without the hassle. No need to recreate the entire search. The date and timestamps will help you be able to navigate which of these descriptions is the right one. Next to the history link is our videos link. This will provide you with a listing of videos that Casemaker has created to help you navigate the system and get better acquainted with it. Next to the videos link is the help link. This includes a link to review our user guide, which is a PDF document that will walk you through the various places in Casemaker and how to utilize our tools. Of course, there's an additional link for our videos, as well as a link to register to attend live webinar sessions, which are free. Another link to register for a webinar is here at the top of the search area. The help screen also provides our customer support information. Casemaker's live customer support is available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. Here we provide our toll-free telephone number as well as our email address. 
Additionally, we provide a link to live chat with our customer support personnel here on the help screen, as well as here at the top of the search area. This gives you the opportunity to instant message with our customer support team during our regular business hours. Now, anytime that you've logged into a web page, be it your Facebook or your LinkedIn account, your bar association page, or your email, or maybe you've logged in to pay your water bill, it is always a good idea to log out for your security purposes. Upon clicking our sign out link, you'll be logged out of the system and provided with a session summary. This is a complete listing of everything you did while logged in, including date and timestamps, as well as client labels if you perform them while logged into a client. We highly recommend that you print this page and keep it for your records, because once you leave this screen, the information cannot be retrieved. Of course, the searches and documents are stored in your history, but without the indication of when you signed in or signed out, so the session summary itself would be lost. Through the features and tools we have implemented, Casemaker is leading the way in legal research.